tradition away. According to the Japanese mythology, the first emperor of Japan, Emperor Jimu, is descended from the sun goddess Amaterasu Omikami, and he founded Japan in 660 BC after he launched a military expedition from Uganda to the Inland Sea. He captured the city of Yamato after defeating Nagasuni Hiko and established the city as the center of his power. The 12th Emperor of Japan, Emperor Kiku, is believed to be the one that conquered Izumo province and the eastern provinces and spread his territory by defeating the local tribes. The local tribes of Japan are often referred to as the Imishi, a term that means the hairy people. Historical and archaeologically, it is not known when the earliest human settlements appeared in Japan. But there is strong archaeological evidence that there were people living in Japan around 13,000 and 35,000 years ago. Well, there is claims that say human settlements existed in Japan before 35,000 years ago. But they are still disputed and not backed with strong evidences nor agreed upon. There is many indications that human beings are roughly 35,000 years ago were already mining raw stones to produce tools, not just picking them up off the ground. In the other hand, the earliest human bones were found in Yamashita Daishi Cave in Okinawa in 1962. The fossilized remains belong to a eight-year-old girl. The radiocarbon dating estimates them to be around 32,000 years old. These four cells were nicknamed Yamashita Doji. These Paleolithic people of Japan arrived to the Iceland via two routes, one from the north and one from the south. They gave birth to what is known as the Jomo people. What we have now of these German people are their artifacts and the tools they use in their daily lives and also remains of their skeletons and bones and fossils. The German culture was characterized by a unique style of pottery. It began around 15,000 BC. This culture existed the same time as the Neolithic Revolution in Europe and in Asia. It ended between 1300 BC, marked by the arrival of the Ayoi people. The Ayoi people arrived from the Korean mainland. However, the German culture is regarded as Japan's first major culture. German people were among the first to make fire pottery. This culture is characterized by many similarities with early cultures of Northeastern Asia and even the Americas. The transition from the German culture to the Yayoi culture was characterized by the introduction of bronze and iron artifacts, the development of rice cultivation and many more. The impact of the new Yayoi culture can be traced as a wave of change moving from southwest Japan to the northeast Japan. Although the innovation was claimed to be originated in China, the migratory route 
was via the Korean Peninsula. Direct comparison between the German and the Yayoi skill terms show that the two people are noticeably distinguishable, which suggests that they were not the same people. In other words, they were not the same race. In another word, there has to be a genetic shift by comparing the Japanese mythology to these archaeological findings we can notice many similarities first of all we can notice that Japan was inhabited by an Aboriginal people which are called the Jomon or the Imishi then around 600 BC according to the mythology and between 1000 and 300 BC according to the archaeological evidence, a cultural and a demographic transition occurred. A new wave of immigrants arrived in the Japanese archipelago. These new immigrants were the Yayoi or the Yamato, the children of the sun, led by the Emperor Jimu. But who are the Jomon? The Jomon are the Imishi people, and the people that are closely related to the Imishi and are thought to be part of the Imishi today are the Ainu, the indigenous population of Japan. Now by comparing the average Japanese or the Yamato to an Ainu individual, we can notice many physical differences between the both. In fact, early European contacts thought that the Ainu were actually Caucasoids. Ainu people have often different skin tone to the average Japanese, and they also have more body hair. Hence why they were called the Imishi or the Heavy People. Their skull are also different. Also their physical structure. That's why many early European investigators proposed a Caucasian origin of this population. The oral tradition of the Yukar Ainu sagas tell that the Ainu lived in Japan hundreds and thousands of years before the children of the sun, the Yayoi or the Yamato, came to Japan. However, in modern day, the Ainu and the Jomo and the Imishia believed and accepted to be a proto-mongoloid type. Genetically speaking, according to a 2004 study, the vast majority, around 87 of the Ainu males belong to haplogroup DM125 and the basal hubble group DM55. The rest 12% of the Ainu males belong to hubble group CM217. Hubble group CM217 suggests that there was a genetic influence from the neighboring Vir people that the Ainu people had various contacts with and actually the Ainu culture is influenced 
by these people's culture. And we are an Aboriginal culture and an Aboriginal people of Siberia. On the other hand, the majority of the Ainu people or the Ainu males carry a Hapu group that is Aboriginal to the Iceland of Japan. Apple Group DM55, for example, was born in Japan around 38,000 years ago. That means it's as old as the German culture. Anyways, there's theory that the Ainu people are closely related to the Andaman people, but by looking at the age of public group DA55, it is clear that this split happened a long time ago to even be considered as closely related, so it's not really like that close. A genetic study revealed that the closest genetic relatives of the Aino are the Ryukyuan people of Japan, another ethnic group of Japan that we will talk about. The other closest population to the Aino are the Yamato and the Nvih people. These are three populations that had various contacts with the Ainu people. It is also important to note that the Ainu people were placed relatively close to Native Americans in the correspondence analysis. A number of haplotype and alleles were shared between the Ainu and the Native Americans, which is pretty interesting. The relatively small genetic distances and the sharing of several HLA haplotypes between Ainu and Native Americans suggest that these populations are descendants of some upper Paleolithic population of East Asia. The Ainu are also closer to Northeast Asian Siberian populations and some modern Native Americans compared to other Mongoloid populations. It is also important to note that there is no genetic relations between Tibetans, Anandemianese and the Ainu people existing that the already existing view that why DNA haplogroup D do not show close relation at all because as we said this place was thousands ten of thousands years ago so it's insignificant anyways thanks for watching this video and see you next time. Next time we're gonna talk about the Yamato people and the Ryukyuan people. See you next episode. Peace.